Welcome to Season 5 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps Shopify-powered brands to accelerate growth. And now on to Episode 230. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. This episode is brought to you by Okendo, the preferred customer marketing solution for high growth Shopify brands. Okendo is helping over 4,000 of the fastest growing retailers, such as Kim Kardashian's underwear label Skims, Nomad, and Buck Mason to leverage their most powerful asset, their customers. Okendo gives brands all the tools they need to capture and showcase customer-generated content like product ratings and reviews, photos and videos, including Q&A. When you're looking to optimize your buyer's journey, increase the volume and the quality of user-generated content, build a flourishing customer community, or collect valuable first-party customer data, Okendo is here to help you. Okendo is your all-in-one customer command center where you can track, report on, and optimize every aspect of your customer marketing. But they also offer many seamless integrations with the tools that you already use and love, including Klaviyo, Google, and Zendesk, to name a few. Join thousands of Shopify retailers who already use Okendo to build shopper trust and excitement, showcasing customer experiences and compel buying action. Start your 14-day free trial today at okendo.io. That's O-K-E-N-D-O dot I-O. Well, hey there, it's Steve Hutt, and welcome back to Season 5 of the E-Commerce Fastlane Podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, if you're an ambitious, lifelong learner, which you likely are since you're here today, you're definitely in the right place. Now, new episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast players like Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog directly from ecommercefastlane.com. Now, in today's episode, my guest is Ben Jones, who's the founder and CEO of a company called Ohi, and that's O-H-I. And what they are is an instant commerce delivery platform, and they help D2C and the CPG retailers and brands to deliver their products in, believe it or not, in under two hours with definitely a more sustainable, a carbon neutral delivery model, which I want to dig into for sure. This is going to be a great conversation. I have so many brands that are trying to differentiate themselves, and I feel that maybe shipping the post-purchase experience is not necessarily on a lot of brands' radar. It needs to be. It's part of the customer journey and experience. So I'm excited to unpack this a bit and get some learnings just to understand how we can, I'd say, strive but maybe to meet and exceed customer expectations. So I think this is an important episode. So hi, Ben. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hey. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. I hopefully didn't butcher the intro a bit here, but about Ohio and what you guys are doing, but I just would love to hear it in your own words. I think, you know, you can probably articulate it better than I can about on a high level first, who is Ohio? Like, what do you do and what sort of problems are you solving right now for Shopify brands? Yeah, I think your introduction was great. Ohio is a instant commerce platform. And what that means is we enable e-commerce brands to offer an incredible instant experience through their own website, enabling them to do sub hour, sub two hour delivery to their end consumers. And we build a whole post-purchase experience around that delivery speed. And really the goal with Ohi is to really put the post-purchase experience on the map as a key growth driver for brands. And we recognize that when you offer incredible post-purchase experiences, you build a huge amount of consumer loyalty and significantly increase repeat purchase rates, significantly increase conversion. And actually we really flip that script of post-purchase experience from being what traditionally has been a cost center for brands to actually being a growth driver. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that a lot of this was driven literally from Amazon and Amazon Prime and just kind of like having this fast delivery option for a small annual fee. And I think and people get kind of used to that. Amazon being, you know, the elephant in the room is being like one of the major players of commerce around the world. And if they're doing that sort of delivery service, you're one-upping that a lot. And Amazon's trying to work on their <laughs> delivery options too. It should be on people's radar. And it's nice to know that you connect to Shopify brands. And I really want to unpack that a little bit in a second. Let's talk a bit about the origin story. It's very fascinating to me. I'm just, I feel very blessed that I'm in this kind of position where I get to meet founders and try to understand why it is they build what they build. And in, in this particular case, it's a very unique, it's not like a piece of SaaS, a piece of software like MarTech is doing. This is like physically boots on the ground in these, call them even micro warehouses and, and the fulfillment. It's just so interesting to me. So can you talk about like, I just, I'd like to understand how the pieces got all together, both you and the founding team and where the desire and the expertise, like where did it come from to even want to build this platform? Let me start right from the beginning and then I can talk about how it works today. So it was actually a very personal experience uh, for starting the company. I had a bad back injury a number of years ago that left me stuck at home for a long time, not really able to go out to the shops. And I became completely reliant on e-commerce. And one of my biggest frustrations during that time was that I could order things from Amazon and get it the next day. But I order from any other brand, and particularly Shopify merchants or you know, independent DTC brands, and it would take three to five days to get to me at best two days. And that just felt, when I was so reliant on e-commerce, it just was, felt dixly slow. And it made me ask, like, how can Amazon do this so well? And Amazon really recognized early on when it first launched two-day Prime, that post-purchase experience was a competitive advantage. I was like, Amazon can do this really well. Why can no one else do it well? And really looking at the market at the time, there is a lot of the focus on the pre-purchase experience. So there are, you know, canvas apps on improving marketing and, you know, improving your website and the whole consumer experience through your, your website, but there's really nothing helping brands offer amazing post-purchase experiences. Traditionally, when a customer checks out, it gets sent to a 3PL, 3PL packs it up in a box and, and ships it and, and it arrives when it arrives. And so really for me, it was, how do we build that platform for post-purchase? How do we enable brands to offer an incredible experience all the way through to box opening. And that was really the founding influence for Ohio. And so where we are today, we are a, a software platform. We are not owning and operating physical spaces. Instead, we empower operators to set up and run warehouses on our platform. And so we're that technology layer that connects all the way from a brand's website, all the way through to the end consumer, orchestrating allocation of inventory across a distributed network of micro warehouses and then delivering product from those micro warehouses to the end customer. It sounds incredibly complex, but I, yeah. I think <laughs> we'll dive into it more, I'm sure. But really the, the technology makes it feel both for brands and consumers incredibly simple. Right. This is amazing. So let's talk about the sweet spot for the consumer though. There's lots of founders, a lot of Shopify brands that are listening today. And like, how do you pitch instant delivery to brands. I guess I'd like to understand a little bit about like what is the business case or what appeals to them about the service that you offer. I, I can appreciate the competitive advantage of being quicker, but I just would love to understand a little more about kind of what you've seen and, and why people make the decision to work with you folks. It's a great question. So really the way we view ourselves, it's not just about speed. It is about that focus on the post-purchase experience and how you make that a new differentiator for you and your brand. And so the main profile that we'll sell to within a brand is generally whoever manages growth for them. It, it tends to be the VP of e-com, VP of sales, maybe the CEO, it's a smaller brand, but it's really the person that's looking at, hey, how can I help grow my business? And the pitch to them is that the post-purchase space is something that has largely been untouched as a source of growth. But increasingly for your consumers, that's just as important to their perception of your brand as the pre-purchase experience. And so here is a platform that focuses on enabling extremely high quality post-purchase experiences that results in much higher growth for your brand. And so the, how do we do that? Like, what are the ways that we drive growth? Firstly, we deliver very quickly. So we can enable delivery in less than two hours, as well as same day and next day services. And we see very clearly in the data now where Ohio is two and a half years old now, and we see very clearly in the data across all the merchants we've worked with that when you offer an instant experience, so sub two hour delivery experience, you get significant increases in conversion. So you see 
up to 28% increase in conversion, which is gigantic, you know, compared to any other tool out there to drive conversion. It's huge. And secondly, and I think almost as importantly, you see much higher repeat purchase rates. I was just going to say that. that. Yeah, the the reorder rate must be really high for brands that get quickly, quickly getting their products delivered to them. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of post-purchase experience is when you provide an amazing one to consumers, they remember that and they come back and they say, wow, I ordered from this brand and it came to me that quickly and the experience was so good. I'm going to go back and shop with them again. And it's that how that post-purchase experience that, that really drives growth. So I think that's really the primary pitch for brands. But one thing that we have also learned over the last two and a half years is, is it's not just about speed. It's actually also about flexibility. So the way our network works is we have a lot of our technology is focused on inventory and inventory allocation. And we have AI models that are determining where to allocate inventory across a network of micro warehouses. And these micro warehouses are hyper local to the end consumer. They are unused retail space, unused commercial space right in the middle of a city. And so we predict what a customer is going to buy, get the inventory forward positioned very close to them before they buy it. And what that enables us is not only to do very fast delivery, but also to provide a very flexible experience to a consumer. And we found that this is really important for subscription brands and for subscription customers is with our network, we're able to offer the consumer a huge amount of flexibility of when they get that order. And one of the biggest sources of churn for subscription customers is that feeling that you got sent another order when you didn't really want it, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. it, it came a few days early and you just didn't, you, you just already have enough of it or it arrived late and you went out and bought something different because you needed the product. What our network allows is for subscription customers is very flexible system where they can define exactly when they want it. I want it today at 4 PM. Okay, great. You're going to get it then. I want it you know, tomorrow at 6 p.m. because that's when I'm going to be home or tomorrow at 9 a.m. because I know I'm going to be home then. That net, the network that we've built and the technology we've built enable that flexibility. So that's really the pitch for the brands is not just about speed, it's about flexibility and it's about providing that incredible post-purchase experience to your customer. Mm, Very cool. I want to talk a bit about just how Ohio is kind of meeting the demands of this kind of instant commerce. I can totally appreciate just <laughs> what Amazon has done with the two day and, and trying to create that competitive advantage and everybody just, you know, the speed is the one thing. I love the flexibility words they use because I think that's also really important. We used a word called, and I don't think a lot of people know this word. These are kind of independently owned micro warehouses or you have a micro warehouse kind of a network. So can you unpack that a bit? Just like for people to understand what exactly does that mean that these kind of unused commercial spaces local to like, you know, highly dense markets. Just interesting to me how, first of all, you find these people and places and then how does the, the fulfillment happen? It's great to have a location and access to software to understand what needs to be in certain markets based on demand. And, but then how is it pick, pack, and shipped from that location to the end consumer? The term micro warehousing is funny. When I very first started Ohio, this was an entirely new term. People didn't, yeah, really, know yeah. you know, people didn't really know what that meant. I remember no. when I was raising our seed round, I got a lot of pushback from investors saying, you know, this is ridiculous. Why, why would anyone <laughs> want to do micro warehousing? This doesn't yeah. make sense versus yeah. traditional warehousing. And I think now you've seen the market really evolving and a number of B2C players or direct to consumer players building out micro warehousing networks in order to do very fast delivery themselves for their platforms. And so the term is increasingly widely used now, but for people that don't know what it means, a micro warehouse essentially is just a small non-traditional warehousing space at much closer to where the end consumer is. So the old world logistics warehouses are very large spaces, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands square foot, they're generally out on cheaper land in the middle of the country or near city. So, you know, I'm in New York here, so there might be warehouses in New Jersey and the surrounding area to service the city. Micro warehouses are totally different. They are 2000 square foot spaces. Our micro warehouses, Ohio's micro warehouses are 2000 square foot spaces and they're generally non-traditional warehousing space. It's unused retail space, old commercial space that we effectively repurpose and turn into these small distribution hubs. And then OHI provides all the technology to enable, you know, it's really end-to-end our technology stack. It sits from the brand's website all the way through to the order management layer of where do we actually send that order once the consumer's checked out through to the fulfillment piece and the the WMS within the warehouse that enables the person running it to pick and pack the order. And then we also have a TMS layer that routes the order to 
the appropriate delivery provider. And we partner with a whole range of last mile delivery providers who come up and pick up the orders from our locations and deliver to the end customer. So really our, our technology sits end to end there. And the, the outcome of that is it enables this incredibly seamless experience for the consumer and, and for the brand. Even in my own home here, I'm in Canada, in Vancouver, and I do notice more as of late, I'm seeing products, non-Amazon products. So these are other direct-to-consumer brands that are arriving in like literally in nondescript cars by just what appears to be random people, but it's done well, it's professional, it's on your doorstep, and there's even a photo taken. And like, it's so interesting that there's that sort of technology available or, you know, using people that have access to vehicles that can move things around quickly from within a local market. That's such an interesting way of, of using, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, like, like the Ubers of the world and Lyft and all these other companies. It's interesting where they're not always completely busy all the time with physical passengers, but why couldn't they deliver packages? And I think that's what's going on in my neighborhood. Yeah. Well, exactly. There's been a lot of innovation happening in the actual last mile delivery space. There's a lot of these companies now that they're generally the same pool of drivers, honestly, that these pools of drivers who want to do deliveries. And those are the companies that, that Ohi connects into. And we our TMS layer helps optimize. One of the benefits of, of working with Ohi is because we're connecting to all these guys you get the best. So like we, we are optimizing and making sure that we're routing to the best last mile provider for your order in your particular market. Oh, I see. Post-purchase is important. We've obviously, that's a huge one. Part of the post-purchase experience is returns management. And so in a case where you're the last mile delivery company and out it goes, and it, let's say it goes out of the Chicago warehouse or wherever, and then the customer makes a decision they want to do a return or exchange, and usually a tech partner in Shopify would be either Loop Returns or Returnly, Happy Returns, Narvar. I mean, there's some really great tools that manage the post-purchase experience. Where does the product go back to in a case where it's coming out of one unique one location? Does it go back into more of a central hub of non ohi serviced markets? I just would like to understand how that works. And then if it does go back to the original warehouse where it was shipped from, is it inspected? And then is inventories then updated? I'm just curious on the technology and then the workflow of a return. Yeah. So I'd say at the moment, Ohi does not provide returns. We've been focused on the outbound experience, but watch this space. That's something that we are going to be building a solution in. I think one of the advantages again of, of our network and technology is, is again, that flexibility. I think that ability for a consumer, not only to just get their product returned, but potentially to swap it out in real time for something new is really powerful. And that's, and pretty, that's, that's pretty cool. We don't do that yet. Watch this space. Yeah, but you know what's interesting though is that like with these tools, if it's Loop or Returnly or whatever it might be, they still have the flexibility in their tool. And I would say all brands that utilize your platform currently in non ohi serviced markets, they still have a central warehouse or two or three that are fulfilling their orders for them. So a returns process would just, it would almost like it would assume that OHI doesn't exist. It'll go back, the label's printed, it goes back or the return, whatever the exchange with the gift card and however the whole thing works. I think it's still very seamless. And so it's almost like it's a piece of technology that you don't even have to know about. This is not part of the customer journey that you affect. We've so. been much more focused on the, the outbound experience because I think returns is, is extremely important as part of the post purchase experience for brands. But the, the opportunity that we saw was really it was that outbound piece that hadn't been touched. Like really that was, you know, a very greenfield space for innovation, which is where we've focused most of our energy. I see. So these micro warehouses, because of their size, I'm, I'm probably right to assume that, that there's going to be an ideal type of products that, you know, would be, I, I guess, most suited for those sorts of locations. Are you able to talk about, you know, like what verticals of products you see doing well? Because then those listening today were like, oh, I'm in that vertical and maybe there's some opportunity here. Yeah. So the broad categories you might find in a CVS is generally how we think about it. So Consumer packaged goods, so beverage, alcohol, pet food, pet supplies, baby supplies, diapers, pet baby food, OGC pharma, snacks and condiments, fem health, sexual health. It's a pretty broad range of categories that we have on the platform. But, but the reason for focusing on those are those are things that, from a consumer standpoint, they want quickly. You know, if you run out of pet food or you run out of your favorite beverage, normally your reaction is, I'm just going to go to the store. And so for brands looking to sell, online direct to consumer in those spaces, there really is a need from their customer base to offer this today. And so that's been where a lot of our core focus is. I really think we are 
just at the beginning of this paradigm shift towards instant. Like Ohi is really at the bleeding edge of innovation here. And I have no doubt in my mind that over the next two years, three years, all commerce will become instant. There's no reason that a consumer would be happy getting their clothes and their, and their shoes in three days or even in two days when they can get everything else they buy online instantly. And so for us, it's just a progression of the market and, and we will, I'm sure, enter you know, the apparel and shoe space. Yeah, this is amazing. It kind of reminds me in the middle of the pandemic, I remember talking to my UPS rep in my local markets and, you know, everybody was choked with supply chain and fulfillment and, you know, BFCM went through in 2020 and it was like out of control. And uh, I still remember them saying that, you know, and this is just in my local market in the greater Vancouver market in British Columbia, that depot had containers, like 40 foot containers full that have not been opened yet with product in it. And I go, and that seems like an absolute shame and it sounds like that's what you're solving like there's tons and tons of last mile delivery drivers out there that are ready to go ready to work and ready to fulfill orders but they just didn't have the manpower to deal with how busy middle of a pandemic is going to be you can only buy through e-commerce and so <laughs> you kind of you were out and available in 2020 but it's just like you're really starting to get your stride now so yeah and, and i think what well, the pandemic cause was, I find it fascinating because I think it puts a lot of people in the same position I was in a few years ago. I was stuck at home because I, I had a back injury, but I was unable to go to the shops. I had to order everything online. And I think the pandemic put a lot of people in that same position. Lots of consumers suddenly found themselves stuck at home, unable or unwilling to go to the stores. And suddenly they're like, wow, like two day delivery does not make sense. Like I need this, this much faster. And so really the pandemic really causes paradigm shift in consumer expectations. And, and that's what we're seeing in the market is increasingly brands realizing that this is increasingly table stakes. And when you do offer it to customers, it really pays you back. It, it really does drive incremental revenue in a way that has never really been seen before with logistics. Yeah. You know, there's an interesting buzzword. I'm just thinking of it now, but it's called carbon neutral. And it, it seems like Shopify is really behind this. I know if those that are using Shopify payments and the shop app that, you know, that the Shopify is putting a certain amount of money and resources behind making all the deliveries that they help fulfill, or in some cases, just, you know, just processing the order. There is a carbon neutral kind of offset opportunity. Does OHI have any kind of social or environmental mission or anything about business? Just I'm curious because you have these micro warehouses and then we also have these fulfillment partners, the last mile actual drivers in the end. I'm just curious in how the business has positioned itself in the marketplace. Yeah, so so sustainability was actually a, a core founding principle for us. It was something that when I started the company, I recognized that logistics is actually, and e-commerce is actually very bad for the environment. It was one of the things that surprised me most as I was learning about the industry is there's a lot of trucks, a lot of planes that are used to fly packages around the country and also a lot of cardboard that's used. And we've all experienced that as consumers is that these piles of cardboard boxes that, that accumulate and all of that is extremely bad for the environment. And so for us, when, when we're starting Ohio, we set sustainability as one of our core principles and how do we not only enable the fastest, most flexible post purchase experience to consumers, but also the most sustainable. And so we are one of the only carbon neutral networks within the US. Every single delivery that goes through the platform is carbon neutral. And everything that we do is focused around reducing the environmental footprint as much as possible. So for example, the huge advantage of an instant platform is because you have used our AI and our technology to pull position inventory very close to the end consumer before they've even ordered, it enables you to use bike couriers, people on foot to do the last mile. And so you eliminate a lot of the use of trucks for delivery, which is obviously a huge part of the, the problem for e-commerce. And secondly, you also eliminate the use of planes. So if you look at next day delivery, often with next day delivery, a plane is being used to fly that package somewhere around the country. It, it does depend, but that's generally the rule of thumb is that it gets put on a plane, it gets flown from the central warehouse to normally the coasts. And then the following day, it's put on a delivery truck and delivered to you. That's how next day works. And so that's extremely bad for the environment. And so once you go over that cliff of next day and then you suddenly go to instant, you find that it is much, much more sustainable and much lower carbon emissions. Secondly, it really is about the use of packaging. And so in the old world, you know, traditional logistics networks, 
a lot of cardboard is used to protect the packages. And with Ojai, and the reason for that actually is, is because packages go through sortation centers, they go on multiple trucks, they get, get put on airplanes and get flown around the country before being delivered to your door. With Ojai, that forward positioning of inventory means we can eliminate cardboard boxes completely. And so the majority of brands deliver their products using reusable tote bags. These are much more environmentally friendly. It's actually a much more premium experience for the consumer. It feels like it's just come from a store. And so we really almost entirely eliminate cardboard from our network. These are all the things that we, you know, we think about when building OHIs. How do we eliminate as much of the environmental impact as possible? Mm -hmm. oh, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's good to know it's a core mission because I think it's you know just a key differentiator, I think, in the marketplace. Knowing this post-purchase experience is important. Shipping is important. The speed's important and all the flexibility, all things that you mentioned. But then on the other side of the coin is that just the environmental and social component that goes along with that last mile. It's good to hear that you're... And once again, that's a very unique experience having a tote. <laughs> right? Because someone... It just, it's just so unique. It's just... And once again, it's another differentiator that I think people need to you know, seriously consider. So Ben, look, we all love stories. I mean, this, this podcast has a lot of founders and there's entrepreneurs and, you know, marketing teams that, you know, listen each week. And I know a story really can educate and inspire others to want to take action. I know I'm inspired by just being on this show. I get to listen in and understand the problems that people are solving for Shopify brands, but hopefully I don't put you on the spot here, but it'd be great if you could maybe share a recent journey of a brand. Maybe they didn't have Ojai, they do now. How do they find out about you? What sort of pains did they have? And then they implemented your service in the markets that you serve and then what sort of almost like a case study but like what happened on the other end or anything that you can share publicly yeah sure yeah i'll talk about one of our earliest customers was a, a company called olipop which is a, a new take on soda a healthier alternative to soda and i remember the head of i think it's tied to head of new business development there a guy called steven ordered actually from one of our other brands we work with another company called house and that aperitif company and he ordered from one of our other brands and it came so quickly to him he was like wow that was incredible like how did they do that that was such an amazing experience that he reached out to us and say hey i just ordered from house how can i do this for olipop as well and so that was really how we got introduced and it's interesting a lot of ohi's growth has really come from referral like we we actually only started marketing in october last year so after being around for you know almost two years because so much of our growth was consumers ordering finding the experience amazing and reaching out and saying hey can i do this for my brand so that's really how they found out about us but the, the pain point they had was they didn't really have a good post-purchase experience they shipped from the middle of the country it took three to five days for their orders to arrive you know, customers didn't really love it. They saw that they didn't have particularly high subscription retention rates for those customers. And they're like, how do we improve this? And it was clear to them that offering the Ojai experience to their customers post-purchase would be a significant improvement. Like say, they were one of our earliest customers. We've grown with them. We've learned a lot from them. And, you know, I'd said that the things we hear from them now is they clearly see the ROI. They've had, I think, a 150% increase in customer lifetime value of customers that use OHI as their post-purchase experience versus UPS uh, or FedEx. So significantly higher retention rates of their subscription customers, as well as their instant order customers. And what the platform provides both for their operations team, as well as CX team is really that peace of mind that they know that it's just being taken care of. Our technology is understanding where to allocate inventory within the network and is monitoring orders in real time to make sure they get to the end customer. And so for their CX team. There's been a big decrease in where is my order cost, which is one of the you know benefits that we've not really spoken about is when you offer an amazing post-purchase experiences, you really eliminate that, hey, what's happened to my order cost? Those are generally the emotions that I would say that we've heard from them and you know they've been a great partner to us and we're continuing to grow with them. Lovely. I just look at your website too. I just noticed that there is a case study there. So I'm going to link that up in the show notes just to dig even further into that one. So that's, that's a good one. It's, I, I've heard of the brand. I unfortunately don't think they're available in Canada, but yeah, nice, nice, healthy twist on soda. That's very interesting. I want to talk a little bit about pricing. I know that a lot of brands that are listening, they likely are, have a wholly owned warehouse of their own. And then they're either using a, a shared UPS or FedEx or DHL account or, or they're shipping through Shopify. Who knows? So I guess just so I'm clear, if someone in, in markets that you serve, so let's say in New York, someone makes a purchase, like you said, a CSV type product, you know, they get some snacks they want delivered and it'll be there in two hours or less. And so it'll reveal in the checkout flow and then they'll be able to select something. And there's obviously going to be a cost either absorbed by the merchant 
or there's going to be an incremental price associated to that extra fast delivery option. And I'm sure there can be, you know, certain variables and saying, well, you know, spend over a certain amount of money and get two hour free delivery. And, and I'm sure that that all can be worked out on the LTV and that's all organized. I'm just curious. So once an order is, is ready to go, from a merchant's perspective, how do you price the fulfillment of that particular package? And then how is it, is it billed back through a separate account? Does it go back in through Shopify's billing API? Like just curious on how the billing happens and how you price it per package in a general market. Yeah. So as you just talk about the consumer experience, how you describe it is right. So when a consumer is on the brand's website, and OHI is available, they'll see on the product page, so before checkout, uh, we have a, a widget that will flag to the consumer, hey, you can get two hour delivery on this item. And that widget is dynamic based on the customer's location. And we see that really helping drive conversion, which is important. So that's where the experience starts for the consumer. If the consumer is outside of our service ball area, they won't see anything. You're not disappointing customers or outside that. So that's where it starts. And then at checkout, they'll see a, a two-hour delivery or same-day delivery option or even a next-day delivery option. And generally, brands price it for free to the consumer. And the reason for doing that is that we see very clearly in the data now is when you charge, all of the ROI benefits disappear. So the reason brands work with us is to drive increased conversion and to drive increased repeat purchase rates. That's really the reason that you offer an instant solution. Unfortunately, Amazon has kind of ruined consumer expectations and consumers just aren't willing to pay. But if you offer it for free, you get a huge amount of ROI benefit that drives for our merchants millions of dollars of extra revenue every year. If you charge for it, those millions of dollars of extra revenue disappear. And so when we work with brands, you know, generally it is free to the end consumer. And then on the brand side, we, without putting numbers on it, we provide flat rate pricing for the brands for orders. So we have, we have a range, a zip range that we'll cover. And we provide flat rate pricing for brands so that they you know, have certainty of, of what ah. it's going to cost them to get goods to customers. I see. Okay. That makes sense. So it's nice just to, yeah. So they know ahead of time, but kind of what, you know, Hey, it's going to cost X number of dollars for someone who selects that in the markets that you serve. And they're like, okay, yeah, that's just going to be bundled in as part of the, you know, the, the net profit of the, of, of the transaction. And just, it just kind of is what it is, but the incremental value and the repeat order rate and the LTV and all the perks and benefits that go along with offering this post-purchase experience just will allow the brand to continue to win knowing they have this kind of great level of service for, you know, for deliveries. So I think that's awesome. So I want to talk a little about the future. I think it's kind of the part of the show. I just, I like to get warm and fuzzy a bit. I can, I appreciate companies only a few years old. You're gaining some great traction. Like I said, I've, I've you know, this Ollie, the Ollie pop kind of a case study and there, there's others I've just noticed here too. So you're doing a lot of great things. I, mean, I don't know, hundred or so Shopify brands are connected to your network and, uh, you know, and, and you're on your way. And I think that's great. I just would love to understand like, what's your North star, I guess, for the remainder of 22, are you going to be ready for BFCM? You know, is there any innovation? I'm just curious kind of where the company is headed and what you're great at today and what do you want to look back on at the end of this year as extra accomplishments? Yeah. So really the CFO high is all about scaling. We are in eight markets across the US by the end of in March. I don't know when this goes out to your listeners, but by the end of this month, by the end of March, we'll be in 13 cities. And by the end of the year, we should be in 25 markets across the US. So it's, it's really about scaling the network as well as continuing to improve the end consumer experience and you know one thing that i find fascinating about what we're doing is there's a big difference between same day even between same day and instant from how a consumer engages with the brand and what we have found is when you're doing true instant which we define as sub two hours you open up this new space for the brand and consumers to engage with one another that's never really existed before. And I think we see much, much higher engagement rates from the consumers with very fast deliveries. And so we're really focused on what can we do in that space? Like what can we do to help continue helping the brand grow and providing an amazing experience to the customer? That's really where a lot of our focus is. And we continue to look at things like there's a lot of 15, 20 minute grocery delivery companies that come up in the last year. And we're continuing to look at what happens when you go even faster. Do you get higher repeat purchase rates with two hour delivery? Do you get higher conversion rates than you do with two hour delivery? And we're continuing to iterate and experiment there, really with the view of how does Ohi provide the best possible experience to the end customer to accrue the most benefit to the brand? And so if we see the data showing that 20 minute delivery is better than two hours, we'll be launching that service as well. But that, that's still yeah. no TBD. 
<laughs> All right, good. Thank you so much for sharing that. So how can people learn more about your solution? Like where do you want to send our listeners today? I mean, we will have the show notes with a lot of the links and things that we talked about today, but is there anything external that you'd like to send people to? Yes, yeah, so you can check out uh, our website at ohi.com. That's ohi.com. That's the best place to find out more about what we do and, and get in touch with the team. Okay, great. And I know you have a great blog. I'll put a link to that also in there. These case studies will have all the details there. And I know we did have a little chit chat before recording today. I understand that you would like to share a little offer for those that just would like to actually try the platform out. They believe that this could be a measurable impact on their business. And so you have a little a little extra, I guess, listener only bonus for today. Yeah. If you mentioned that you heard about us from this podcast, please mention it to the team when you speak to them and you'll get the first month for free from the SaaS fees that we charge for the platform. You'll get the first month free. Oh, beautiful. Okay. What I'll do, I'll have ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Ohi. That will redirect you to a landing page over on Ohi and they'll have all the details there about that first month for free, uh, getting into a 12 month contract. Nice to have a demo so you can see how the platform can work. I'm assuming there could be some kind of an audit or something that could be done with a brand to saying, Hey, based on all of the orders that you've done over the last year, we believe that the customers would have had these many customers in these markets would have had the opportunity to have the two hour delivery option. Are you able to do that that sort of audit and research? So come to us, we'll integrate into your Shopify and we'll we'll take a look at your data for you and run a network analysis and show you had you worked with Ohio over the past year, this is the ROI that we'd have driven for you. This is the incremental revenue that you'd have had from working with us. And, and we'll use that to determine if it's a good fit or not for the platform. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Ben, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thanks for sharing this. I just, I, I'm not sure how I found out. I know you're newish in the marketplace, but you're obviously, you know, creating a really neat platform and you're in this massive blue ocean of opportunity for post-purchase. And I think it's really, really cool what you're building. And I'm, I'm excited that you're expanding out into lots of markets. This is going out in mid-March. So you'll have, uh, you know, your eight or more markets markets or 12 markets and 25 at the end of the year. So it sounds like North America, or at least America, there's going to, you're going to be servicing a lot of the major markets and it's really exciting. So I just implore those that are listening today. If you're trying to differentiate yourself in the market and you understand the benefits of a post-purchase experience from the return side, you can get that that's resolved already with you know some different apps from a fulfillment and a fast shipping option, not to mention the, you know, just the benefits of being flexible and using existing drivers and, and not having to all the packaging and the, there's so much savings, but then you get the uplift that I'm really think is exciting for what Ohi offers. So thanks for sharing, you know, your journey and I wish you a tremendous success moving forward into the rest of this year. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Great to meet you. And thanks for having me on. You're quite welcome. Today's episode was brought to you by Okendo, the preferred customer marketing solution for high growth Shopify brands. Okendo provides all the tools you need to leverage your most valuable asset, your customers, build shopper trust and excitement, showcase customer experiences and compel buying action with a little help from Okendo. Start your free trial today at okendo.io. That's O-K-E-N-D-O dot I-O. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you, a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, launch, grow, and scale with Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.